Hello and welcome to Ed Space, where we discuss some of the week's top news headlines with Mint's editor Sukumar Ranganathan. Welcome to the show, Sukumar. We had a lot of interesting headlines this week, this week but one of the interesting ones was the Supreme Court order on mining uh, in Karnataka as well as in Orissa. How does how do, how do these two verdicts, you know, balance environment concerns for tribals and economic growth? I think uh, the judgments are fairly significant because if you if you look at what's been happening over the last two years. I, I think much of industrial activity in this country came to a standstill, right? And um, one reason for this was litigation related to the environment. And I think the court has done a commendable job in balancing the needs of the environment, balancing the need to protect the environment, balancing the needs of local people with that of industry. If you, if you look at uh, the Niamgiri verdict, which involves Vedanta, uh, it is told Vedanta that it can go ahead, or, or, or rather it is told the Rusa state-owned company, which is a partner of Vedanta, that it can go ahead, provided it manages to convince the local people and gets them to sign off. So I, th I think, you know, local participation is there and it will ensure that it's done. The important thing to see here is, 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 to, is to really ensure that the company, when it goes to the people, the local people, speaks to them, speaks to all of them because in the past uh, companies have been known to sort of you know skirt around these issues and put up a notice about a public meeting where no one can see them. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be ensured but I still think it's a progressive step uh, because it, it, it shows the way ahead because until, until now all industry was seeing was a wall, now there's a gate. Yeah. Uh, we, we, of course there's also a watchman <laughs> but, but, you, but it shows them the way ahead. And even if you look at Karnataka, um, iron ore mining had come to a standstill some time back. And then last year, the court allowed mining in a certain category of mines. And everyone expected that the other categories would follow. And, and that's really what we are seeing now. So it, what the court has done is it's come down very heavily on illegal mines, but, but it's shown the way forward for these mines. Uh, still some rough edges, some things that need to be ironed out, uh, but, but I think uh, by allowing industry to go ahead uh, with some caveats and by clamping down on illegal mining, it, it, it's tried to balance the needs of both the environment and industry. Another headline this week was, you know, the IT company results. Uh, Infosys hasn't done, you know, hasn't done well, whereas you have HCL, Wipro and TCS. They've posted better results. Do these numbers tell a story about the health of our IT industry? See, overall, there are really two stories here. The, the big story is that I think the entire Indian IT industry needs to be reinvented. Right. It, it's, it's an industry that for a very long time has been very dependent on uh, the number of people you have. So what, what experts call the linear growth model. You add more people, you get more business and, and uh, your revenue goes up and everything else. The unfortunate thing is uh, if you add more people, your revenue goes up companies will keep trying to bring their costs down so your profit margins will keep coming down. Right. So you will be a large company but your profitability will keep coming down and that's exactly what we've seen with a lot of Indian IT firms. I think some of the others, if you, if you leave Infosys aside, if you look at some of the other large ones, they've managed to weather the storm better mm -hmm. because in some cases they are a little further down uh, their non-linear businesses than Infosys is. Uh, in some cases, they've been far more aggressive with sales than Infosys is because for a long time, Infosys uh, held on to its pricing. Yeah. Whereas many of these other companies were a little flexible with their pricing, have always been a little flexible with their pricing, especially when compared to Infosys. So that would explain why some companies are doing better. Um, of course, if you, if you look at some other companies which are based outside the country, they are also doing better because they have more front-end people, more people who lies with clients, who engage with clients, who work with clients and make the relationship more of a consulting relationship with IT being just one part of it. But if you look at the entire industry, mm -hmm. then I think it, it's time for the entire industry to start moving to offering cloud services, to offering platform-based services, to do non-linear things. Mm -hmm. and the interesting thing is all of them know this. They've been speaking of this for quite some time. Uh, but the numbers are beginning to show that, you know, are, are beginning to hurt 
and yeah. and I and I think that in the next two three years you'll see Indian companies move further down this road. We had another issue t- this week, which was commodity prices. You know, gold prices, for example, tumbling. What does this talk about in terms of you know the global economic recovery? Is there any story behind this? Well, uh, commodity prices obviously follow a cycle. Yeah. Everyone knows that, and we had a, a situation where commodity prices had really gone up, mm. so they've come down. The fact that prospects for a global economic recovery aren't exceptionally good, because mm. if you look at the IMF's world economic outlook, it's speaking about a three percent expansion, yeah. uh, which is not much, and it's speaking about a contraction in the eurozone. Yeah. So, but the primary reason, if you look at commodities per se, it's not really what's happening in the US or what's happening in Europe. It, it's what's happening in China, yeah. and the Chinese economy again is growing and it's growing at rates that everyone else would be pretty happy with but it's 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 a step down from what they were growing at and and clearly this means there is a consequent dip in the demand for commodities in that economy which is which has really been a commodity guzzler you know i mm-hmm. i don't think we can use any other word and and, and if you, if you look at whether it's coal if you look at steel you you look at oil you look at almost any of the minerals and and metals China has been at the forefront of demand for it, other than gold. Yeah. Gold, of course, it's India. India. Uh, but um, and 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 that's changed. And the mm-hmm. minute that changes, you you obviously have a situation where uh, the prices come down. And I think that's a good thing, especially for companies in India, because their costs will go down. Mm-hmm. Right? It is it, it's a problem for companies which are producing those commodities, especially the mining and the metals companies. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a benefit for all the user industries because the prices come down. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us, Sukumar. That's all we have for you this week. Thanks for watching and please stay tuned for more.